All right, Bob, I see you here. Happy Thursday. And we have got everybody. So I would like to open the public meeting and just for everyone's um, convenience for following along, we're just going to go straight down the agenda tonight. So we are going to start with a continued virtual public hearing for 110 Main Street. Public hearing will be held on Thursday, November 10th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Sean Ferris, representative for RECR Realty LLC, 110 Main Street, North Reading, MA, on an appeal of the decision of the building commissioner for the timetable to comply at 110 Main Street, Map 24, Parcel 6, North Reading, MA. Um, Kathy, do we have anyone here on behalf of the applicant today? I don't think so. I'm going to stop hearing for a second. And just as a reminder to the board, we've been holding this hearing open. The petitioner had been working with the building commissioner to um, remove remove storage items and tenants from the property who had not been permitted. They had been working on that over the last several months and making progress. We had just kept this open to get status updates. And what I would suggest is I did wanna get a update from Jerry if he is signing in this evening um, before we close out this hearing. So I am going to put this one on pause for the evening. Um, Kathy, if you would remind us to make sure that we close this out and vote one way or another before we leave for the night. Um, yeah. I do wanna get let Jerry have a chance to just um, weigh in if he is here this evening. So that is going on pause for, till the end of the end of the evening. All right, moving on. So this will get us up to um, 142 Main Street has asked for a continuance. They are working with um, town fire department on access issues for the property. So they have asked to continue this till our December meeting, which I believe is we've set on December 1. Yeah. We have an application, we have a, is that correct? They did, um, and I, I thought I sent it, but maybe I didn't, but they sent me something late, but requesting to go to January because of the holidays coming up and having to resolve this issue with the access. So they asked to go to January. Um, I, I see no issue with that, provided that they, they submit a request to formally extend. Have they sent in a, a request? Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. They did. Your audio is a little bad, Kathy. I don't know if mine is as well. They did send in the request. Okay. I see no issue with that. Do we have um we have a date for January? What's our second Thursday? December, January. That would have us, our typical meeting would be January 12th. Anyone on the board have a pressing conflict with the 12th of January? I'm, I'm fine with the 12th. Thanks, Bob. I think I'm okay with that as well. That's great. And Beth is joining us tonight. I mean, um, I'm sorry, Kathy, I'm having trouble with your audio. I said Michelle is joining us tonight also. Okay. Said okay, I think you said that Michelle's okay with that too. If that's the case, then terrific. Let's um, send them to. January's meeting on the 12th. And I would just ask for, they've made a request. So we should 
formally approve that. All in favor, Bob? Bob Ray and I. Maria. Maria, Lock Maria Lockhart, I. Extended by I. All right. Moving right along to the perhaps one of the highlights of this evening, 25 Maple Road. The attorney keys here is ready, ready to we're, go. Let me just we're back. You're back. Let me just read the announcement here. Continued virtual telephonic teleconference public hearing will be held on Thursday, November 10th. 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Smith Sons Plumbing and Heating Inc. represented by attorney Joe Keys regarding the property located at 25 Maple Road, North Reading, MA, map 43, parcel 23, owned by Tracy and Janino to appeal the decision of the building commissioner for a single lot exemption. And Joe, you provided us with a wealth of information over the last few days. Thank you. Um, uh, primarily, or most importantly, the title and deed for the property, as well as the original plan, which I've got to say, you got to give credit to someone for divvying up a land in that Basically, just as a, as a quick. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. No, do you want me to keep that up? Um, Kathy, I think you. Joe wants you to yeah. let him share okay. the screen. I thought you wanted to share your screen. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I think I can do mine. Um, because I can't control that. Okay. Right? All right. Let I, me stop. Thank Go ahead. you. Uh, where does it say I can control this? Share screen. There it is. Okay. The green button down the bottom. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Everybody can see our lot right here. It's a uh, labeled 23, 2.2 acres. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So just as a recap, I, I wanted to show you and, and I have a little bit, some, some updated information. So we're looking for a single lot exemption for this property. Um, earlier, uh, I believe last week, or at, at our last meeting, I had mentioned that uh, Copeland and Page had been through this a number of times. Uh, they they had a, a test that uh, that they ran these lots through. Um, I shared that with um, with the board, and essentially, um, you know, it's our argument that we fit uh, those requirements. Um, one is that the lot needs to be in separate ownership. It can't be in common ownership with other adjoining lots. Uh, it had to exist before either zoning or a change in zoning that would um, otherwise prejudice the lot. Um, a single lot. Uh, I'm sorry. It has to have at least 50 feet of frontage and at least 5,000 square feet. I've gone over this a number of times, and I, I, I think the hang up with this lot is that an RA, the, we're in the RA zone. The RA zone calls for uh, a minimum of 40,000 square feet. And if you look at uh, 40A section six, the, the kind of key language in there, as far, and this is just with respect to the size of the lot, it says that, um, where did it go now? It needs to ba basically it needs to have at least 5,000 square feet, but less than the change, which would be in our case, if it existed prior to zoning, it had 2.2 acres, then it needed to be a lot that it was at least 5,000 square feet, but less than 40,000 square feet. That's would be our golden ticket to having a grandfathered lot. And, and Jennifer, I think that on the first meeting, you had said that, why do you need this? You have a big enough lot. Well, looking at this over and over again, if you look at the table of, um, I'm going to pull up some of
something else here. The, uh, bah, bah, bah. the table of dimensional, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this one. Give me a minute, I'm not the most uh, technologically advanced guy in the world. All right, and you rotate. Okay, everybody can see that? Not yet. Right there? Now we see it. Okay, so here's our table of dimension, uh, dimensional and density regulations. So we're in the RA zone. We're looking at 40,000 square feet, 160 feet of frontage. And those are really the two things that we're worried about here. We're not really worried about side and rear setbacks or anything else like that because it's a vacant lot. So, you know, it, it, you look at this and at first glance you go, well, it doesn't fit the, um, the, the structure of 40A section six or the Copeland and Page uh, test. But if you look down at the very bottom, it says areas which are designated as floodplain or wetland are subject to the dimensional and de density regulations which puts us squarely back into the realm of 40A section six, because we can't meet those dimensional regulations. So therefore we should have an exempted lot because those are the rules that we can't apply by. The standard rules with our, that are dimensional for, for, for wetlands or floodplain are, um, and Kathy, you can correct me, um, it's within 75 feet of a wetland, uh, 100 feet from a well or 10 feet from a lot line. Those are the dimensional ones that we should be um, exempted from because we can't meet those. And I can go back to that plan um, to show you the extent of the floodplain and wetland on the property. Uh, give me just a second. So that's our new information and that's that's what's hanging us up here it's not necessarily the size of the lot it's the orange here is the floodplain the brown section is everybody can see this now mm -hmm. okay the orange is floodplain and the brown part sticking up is is where the uh wetlands are and that's 75 feet is not necessarily to the edge of the wetlands, it's the, to the edge of the vegetated wetlands, which, you know, past experience at least tells me that it could be a little bit further out than what that um, brown area could be. So that's where we're limited. That's why we need uh, some relief here from, from the board. And uh, that's why we're looking for an exemption. And, and just from my, taking a look at this and I know everyone's going to have some thoughts on this. Um, but I think you, you are going to need some relief and you know, particularly given the floodplain and the wetlands on this property, it could make building an issue. But going back to the issue in front of us on whether or not this qualifies as a um, as a single lot for the single lot exemption under chapter 40A section mm -hmm. six, paragraph four, um, I, have, I have some issues with that. And, and one of the, you know, my understanding of paragraph four of section six of 40A is we're talking about a, it's you know, an old lot on a plan that was big enough, it predates some change in zoning, was conforming at some point, then became non-conforming, but is big enough that the legislature thought, all right, we wanna protect this type of lot. And there's two categories in, of lots in, in paragraph four. One is a, a lot that was in single ownership and then the second section of the paragraph deals with um, a series of lots that were in common ownership. And what is it? It's not, you know, it has um, additional criteria that you look through when you get into the second half of that paragraph. Uh, but one of the, the key criteria there is that it is not more than three such adjoining lots held in common ownership. Right, but the, these lots are just 
merely a legal description for the property. The the town shows this as one lot, not as multiple lots. But the town on an assessment lot is not, I don't think is um, definitive or in any way connected with the language in 40A. We're talking about lots shown on a plan that have been endorsed or recorded and what we have i mean you're this this very old 19 was it 13 or 30 plan we show a zillion little lots of which the applicant here owns eight of them eight adjoining lots which makes a two acre lot i think that takes you out of out of the running for a you know a single lot exemption and even if it were one lot on a plan i have an issue with it being conforming um, at least to the to the size of the lot the wetlands issues um, i think are, are a bit out of our purview and maybe there's an argument with that you would have with um, CONCOM that they shouldn't apply. But in terms of, and I, and I think that, that might be a, a tough one as well, uh, but you, you may have a, a hardship issue. And I think the, from my perspective, and I'll let the other board members weigh in on this, from what I can tell and what the building inspector said, this is a conforming lot. If there's something about the shape, um, topography, functions of the lot itself, which would force you to, to need a variance, then you would come in front of us and that I think would be a, you know, actually a legitimate right. request. Can I get yeah, hold on just a minute, go ahead. So, yeah. And that's just sort of, that's my overview. And before we, we go back to you, I'd like to just open it up to the board for a minute to see if they have questions or comments they'd like to say. And then, I, then I'd like you, Joe, and, and your client to, to reply back to that with any thoughts. So Bob, I'm gonna just, Bob and Maria, any thoughts on that? I don't, I don't, hold, hold, wait, they're going to go first and then we're going to go. I think I think it still goes back to what we've discussed at length before um, the need to. To designate it as both to, to get to their point, and I mean, I think your summation, Madam Chair, is, is pretty. Comprehensive on it, I'm just not. I have the same. You know, um, Maria, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I've never been able to buy in on the idea as presented, but. I'm Again, I'm not saying this is not a, a buildable lot. I think it is a buildable lot. Um, and it's gonna be up to you guys to figure out where on the lot you build. And if there are site conditions then that's um, you know, something to from you on the builder side to work out. Maria, I'm kind of all I'm kind of like that. I don't even know how to. I'm kind of the same as you. Um, I'm kind of um, sort of trying to figure out if it's a bunch of lots or one lot. <laughs> and but I do think it is buildable as well. I'm just not sure. If that's kind of where we are at this moment. Um, again, um, Joe, I mean, I think this is, and what the building commissioner was saying is, this is a buildable lot. You don't get exempt from the the setback requirements because I, it, all of that's fine. What it, what the point I'm driving at is that if it's in the, the wetlands that is also in play. I'm not, I'm not arguing with you about a, the lot being buildable as far as 40,000 square feet, the setbacks, 
the frontage, everything else like that. But if you look at the note under the, the zoning uh, regulations table, you know, it's the dimensional and density regulations for floodplain or wetlands that we can't conform to. And I know that that's hard because we don't have a plan to show you, but we came before the board this way because you know, Bill felt that, that this was the way that he was being directed, you know, when we received the email um, from the building inspector. Um, okay. Bill wants to say something, so let, let's, let's. Yeah, we're going, we're skirting around the law, trying to find out some technicality that you can beat these people out of these lots. It's, it's not fair. You're not following chapter 48, section six, YA section six says nothing about all this wetland and this land and that land. We go through that all the time, but it's after the fact. It, what it says when you apply for a, a single lot exemption, there's four criteria that you got to meet, and that's it. If you, if you meet all those four criteria, you have to give us the, the extension. What happens later on with the wetland and, the, and everything? everything else, all the other stuff that the town will throw at us. We deal with that afterwards. But we're talking about stuff that don't even pretend to pertain to the issuance of the grandfather's ex extension, and not extension. Um, exemption. What? Exemption, single lot exemption. exemption. And, yeah. um, so I, I don't know why why everybody's searching and searching. Well, well maybe we've we'll got something over here. Maybe we get something over here. All we want to do is get ourselves exempt so we can go to work and get the project started. But we haven't answered the question. We asked one tiny question for three months, and that was, is that this lot exempt from, uh, we exempt under the guidelines of chapter 48, section six. And don't forget, the town of North Reading back in 1959 accepted the, the all the, the uh, criteria of 40, 48 as, a, as the zoning guideline. And if we can't follow the guideline of the law, then we're in trouble. And I, and I agree with you entirely. I think it is our obligation to follow both the local, our North Reading zoning bylaws, as well as chapter 48, which is the governing document. Um, my my read though of chapter 40A and the section six and the criteria, there are two criteria in particular where this lot fails. And one is um, it is not a single lot, not held in common ownership. And, and, what, and, and to let me continue, um, it doesn't meet the criteria of it conformed with existing requirements but had less than the proposed requirements. So based, yeah, on, what, well, based on what we have on the record, um, I, I, I just don't see how this would apply. Again, this is not saying you can't come forward with a building permit or a plan, but I don't think this is your way to do it. My, my only rebuttal to that is that it, it, with all due respect, I think you're confusing what the legal description is with what a lot is and and the lot is comprised of what's described on that plan uh, the, the, the biggest my biggest problem is why aren't we following the rules we have to give, we follow the rules the town are not letting accepted this chapter in this section and the same thing with the zoning bylaw and the town are not letting when you get to chapter i mean uh what is it I, and i, I and we have we absolutely agree that we need to follow the rules and it's an interpretation of those. And again, Joe, I'm looking at the plan you submitted. Uh, right, and I'm, I'm, I'm just right. But what, what it says here is that it's provided further that the provisions of this sentence shall not apply to more than three of such adjoining lots held in common ownership. We only own the one lot. We're not trying to take three smaller lots and make them into a lot that's at least 5,000 square feet which I think we would be trying to skirt the, 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 the meaning of the law. We have a lot that's just made up of a bunch of little lots on a plan. I, I get what you're saying, but- There's not a recorded plan, or at least not one that's been submitted 
that shows what? this as a single lot on a plan that was endorsed before a change in the zoning bylaws that increased a bulk or dimensional criteria which made your lot non-conforming. But on the other hand, you've already said that my lot's never been non-conforming. Also an issue, right. So it's gotta be one or the other though. It was non-conforming in 1959 when the town accepted chapter 40. When was it non-conforming? I don't have anything in front of me that shows- Right, but, but, but you just said it was non-conforming a minute ago. You just- no, I, I think you may have misheard me or perhaps oh, I misspoke. Maybe. But I mean, I think you- maybe. I mean, this is. Yeah, I mean, I, and, and I, I, I feel like we're, we're going around and around. We, we are. And, so and, I'm going to. And that's fine. And, I'm, and again, I mean, we I don't want to waste the board's time. time. And so I'm going to suggest that we close this and we take it to a vote because really, I mean, I don't want to hold you up if, if, if this is not going. Um, the way you would like, at least, you know, we still think this is a buildable lot. It lets you get on to the next phase. And if you need to approach this a different way, which is- Right, but I, I, I just, just as, as just one last thing is that, you know, we, we do need the single lot exemption for the wetlands part of it. And I feel that, you know, very strongly that, I mean, it's very clear that we meet that because it's, it's, it's included in the uh, dimensional and density regulations right on there it says that, that those things apply that's what we need it's because right. if, we, if 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 you're telling us we have a buildable lot and we go to the building commissioner and we put a plan together as a buildable lot and then i go to then you gotta uh, go to concom just like right. and, and, but but lines. but if i go to concom they're going to say you can't build this because you're within 75 feet of wetlands and then i have to say to them I'm grandfather, and they have to say, you need to go before the zoning board for that, and we're here nine months from now. No, and then I think what you do is you come back and you have to look for a variance because you are looking to be closer to some set, you know, minimize some setback. But I'm grandfathered for that under the wetlands because it clearly says that it's part of the dimensional and density requirements. Based on, I, I'm going to close the hearing. Okay, I, I, fair, sorry. And yeah, I, I hear you. And I, I, so that being said, um, Bob and Maria, would you uh, I'm make a motion to close this so we can then so can discuss say, and deliver, deliberate. Can, can Bill just say one more thing? Is If it's different, if I'm it's just in courtesy for everyone here. I think we've been through this a number of times. I, I go, go ahead. It just, Number one, these people have been paying 52 years. Go back 1970, they bought the property as a buildable lot. They paid 52 years of taxes on this lot. Then they go to try to build a house. You know, you, feel, you can't build them that. They're, they're, they're not saying that we can't build them. We got, a, we got a little technicality here. I mean, I, I don't, I just don't get it. So you almost like the board that doesn't want this lot to happen. And I'm, I hate to think that, but it, it, it appears that way. I would have started, if it was me, uh, with, the, with the chapter and section that we told you about first. The first is, first thing was, does it, do we have the four qualifying um, no. regulations? And the answer is yes. And that's all it was, to, to get into the wetlands and the, all the, the other stuff in the dimensionals and the, Four criteria, if we meet that four criteria in our application, then we're entitled to be a grandfathered lot. It's it's a protected lot under 40A. It, 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 we shouldn't be going off into the surrounding properties and saying, well, the lot's too big. It don't matter how big it is. It could be two miles square. It, it, All right. I, 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 uh, Mr. Smith, I appreciate that. Um, and I, I think you're... You can have a conversation with Joe afterwards and he can ex sort of explain our position on it. Um, but I'm gonna, um, Bob, would you make a motion to close the public hearing? Sure. Uh, move to uh, close the uh, public hearing on this matter. Thank you, Bob. Um, Maria, do we have a second? 
I second that motion. Thank you. All in favor? Bob? Bob, Bob Bree and I. Bree Lockhart, I. All right, and myself as well, Jennifer Platt. All right, so folks, I mean, um, board, this, you know, this started off with the applicant just asking the building inspector, um, I think rather informally, if uh, to confirm that this was a grandfathered lot. The building inspector said, no, did not think it was. We reached out to town council. They said, no, we've had um, a, a lengthy back and forth with the applicant and their council and appreciate that they've, they've taken the time to work with us and walk through this and provide um, quite a wealth of information on it. Um, I mean, I think we've, we've heard each of our, our thoughts on this um, and you, you've, you've heard mine. Uh, again, I think this is not that I, you know, as far as we know, this is a buildable lot, but I, I, where I think this should be coming is the, you know, going through the, the typical building permit process, as opposed to looking for a um, exemption from the bylaws. I disagree with the applicant that this falls within paragraph four of chapter 48, section six. That being said, um, Bob and Maria, any other thoughts on this uh, or ready to make a motion? And with regard to that, um, and obviously the history of this lot may predate my um, acting with within the Zoning Board of Appeals, but um, the idea that it may or may not have ever been approached before or is to me understandable with regard to the petitioner, um, that sense of frustration in the in the immediate, but um, given not much more in my view, uh, the fact that town council has, has rendered a, a position on this and um, I would endorse because I think that a support. Um, I also believe that, uh, you know, the points made tonight with regard to um, qualifications attended to wetlands and uh, conservation uh, all pertain to, you know, going forward with a plan. And I do believe that it should fall within um, the zoning board. Um, zoning regulations as opposed to being grandfathered in and predate. Um, I just basically um, feel the same way as that kind of. Um, I feel like con con would need to play a bigger part in this also because it's all wetlands. It looks like the whole lot is wetlands. Um, so I'm kind of sort of not understanding how if it's grandfathered by CONCOM or the wetland issue, why that makes it grandfathered for our position. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, I think it probably needs to go through the same process that everybody goes through. And on that point, uh, you know, that's that's an interesting thought. I mean, and, you know, the applicant petitioner might um, want to take a moment with regard to going forward on this matter or withdrawing and not to try to um, no, I don't, suggest I don't otherwise. To, but, or that would even be appropriate, but, Bob, because it's, sure. it's just a, it's a determination or it's an appeal of the building Thank you. Right. Decision. decision. This is a not qualified as a single lot or a, grand, a single lot exemption as a grandfathered lot. And just as a side, as a procedural thing, we're not asking for, we didn't file a, um, which is why the word just escaped my brain. Um, we didn't file a formal application like for a variance or anything else like no. that, where if you if you made a decision and then I couldn't come back in two years. You're just no, absolutely not. We, we're not trying to yep. prevent development of this lot or prohibit you from coming in front of this board again. This is only on your appeal of the, of building, the building inspector's, inspector's decision, yeah. decision um, which you're welcome to do, you're welcome to appeal yeah. this as well. But um, that being said, uh, 
I move to close. Great. I think we're closed. I would ask if if one of you would like to make a motion to um, either uphold the building inspection, building inspectors determination that this lot did not qualify as a um, for a single lot exemption. I'd like to make a motion um, with regard to the petitioner's application for relief from an attendant to the appeal of the building commissioner's determination for single lot exemption that um, uh, that the petition and application uh, be denied and that the uh, effectively the uh, building inspector's decision um, be controlling. Do we have a second? Second that right. motion. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Bob Breen, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. And myself, aye. All right. So hopefully we will see you in front of the building inspector with a plan if you need, if you need relief in front of our board. Um, but we hope that you can make something out of this property, but it's a, I think there's just a different route to take it than, than this one. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, everybody. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank Good you. night. All right. Um, Kathy, on 33 Lakeside, we had a, a placeholder for the applicant. He was looking into the title to his property to see if he really, to what extent he needed a variance. And my expectation is he probably did not have anything to come back to with us tonight. Um, did we hear anything from Maximum? Kathy? I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Thank you. I haven't received anything back from um, the applicant. Um, I did send him a request, request to continue if that's what he wanted to do. And I did not get anything back on that either. OK. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's not double check how long we have to act. I think I would suggest that we continue this to December um, or December 1st, um, provided that the applicant submits a status of some sort. <laughs> status and so, some, a, and a some indication that they're going, he's going, he's pursuing, you know, trying to determine if he has rights beyond what his, his appeal was, because I think we made it fairly clear to him that unless he showed the water rights, I think that was kind of his, that it just was to, the, the, the dimensional design was just uh, too, just not gonna, it was too, in short, too, too close, right? I mean, and I'll, I'll, I'd acknowledge that it, it, it that undertaking of trying to find out what that legal remedy might be might have not given a four, we made a month's time may not have afforded them enough opportunity. I, I agree with you, Bob. I think it's he had he had a, quite a bit of homework to do. Um, 
as a courtesy, I would suggest that we continue this to December. Um, um, but Kathy uh, would ask that you try to, I, I know you've tried to reach out to him. If we don't hear from him by December um, with a formal request to extend further, um, I think we need to just close it out. But I would, uh, I would move that we just extend this to December and then pick it up there. Do I have a? Do you want a, a, do you want a Kathy, motion or is that Kathy, just? I, 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 I see Kathy highlighted there. Did you have something you wanted to add? No, I just said okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, let's just do it by the books. If you would like to. Uh, With regard to the petition of. Um, in this case, uh, 33 to the side. Thank you. Um, that uh, the board agree to move the matter uh, until our next meeting on December 1st to give the applicant time to status us on his petition. I second that motion. Thank you, Maria. All in favor? Bob. Bob Breen, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. Jennifer Platt, aye. Thank you. All right, Lakeside next month. All right, now we're moving into um, new business. Uh, I understand that Three Linwood Ave had an issue of some sort and has continued, has requested to continue to December. Was that an issue with getting their notices out, Kathy? I forgot. Yes, they didn't get it out um, within the time limit. All righty. So Three Lynn, um, so we're not opening that hearing. Um, well, if we don't open them, um, it was advertised in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. So I believe we'd have to advertise again if we don't open. All right, then we will open this and then we will continue it. So let me just read this public notice. Virtual public hearing will be held by teleconference on Thursday, November 10th at 7 p.m. on the petition of Jeffrey Gannon Three Linwood Ave, North Reading, MA, Map 4, Parcel 97 for a special permit to raise chickens. The petitioner is also requesting a variance for the setback of the chicken coop uh, due to the applicant's failure to get notices out to abutters uh, within the time permitted. We are uh, continuing this hearing until December 1. Um, and we will just do the normal protocol. Bob, if you wouldn't mind just making a motion to continue this till December 1, and we will go through the deal. Again, with regard to the petition of Jeffrey Gannon regarding three Linwood Ave, uh, map four parcel 97 for a special permit to raise chicken, as well as a variance for a setback. Um, I move to um, continue the matter until December 1st uh, for status and um, um, presentation by the uh, petitioner. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> second. Hi, Maria Lockhart. Second that motion. Thank you. And would we all love to vote on this motion? <clears throat> Excuse me, Bob Rain, I. Maria Lockhart, I. Thank you, Jennifer Platt. All right, all right, moving on to 247 Main Street. I'm gonna read the hearing notice. A virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, November 10, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Caroline Camus and Michael Harugu, I believe, and Mac Enterprises, Inc. for a special permit to run a medical transportation business at 247 Main Street, North Reading, MA, Map 13, Parcel 12. And looks like we have a number of folks here. Is there someone here to speak on behalf of the applicant? And if you would give your, your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, Elizabeth Daly from the Law Office of Richard Cowman, 4 South Main Street, Ipswich, Massachusetts. Thank you, Elizabeth. Welcome. Could you tell us uh, about this petition? This is the new one in front of the board this evening. Yes, uh, board members, I represent the petitioners, uh, Carolyn Camus and Michael Caragu and Mac Enterprises. 
and their petition to purchase 247 Main Street and operate a medical transportation business at its premises. This building has, is in the Highway Business District. It's historically been a busy real estate office. The proposal of my clients is that they will operate their business from within the property. At the current time, there is a jewelry business on the first floor and the rest is vacant. The clients would have their office inside with them inside and they would have their 10 medical vans parked outside in the existing parking spaces. The way that their business is structured is that it operates from about 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on weekdays. The drivers arrive in their personal vehicles, they pick up their van, their shifts are staggered, and they take the van out and they take mostly elderly people, people who cannot drive themselves to their medical appointments. They don't congregate in the office. The clients who get driven do not come to the premises. So there's no, never a bunch of people <coughs> are congregating here um, in the, on the premises. They, um, they would be operating in the existing footprint of the building. There'd be no changes to it inside or outside. The sketch that we filed with the application shows the ingress and egress perfectly adequate. There's about 24 or 25 parking spaces, which is plenty. This would probably actually be less than was used when it was operated as a busy real estate office. It does qualify to apply for a special permit based on Article 8, Section D of the zoning regulations. I can go through the various factors that need to be met in order to receive a special permit if you would like. I think that is all right. We are have some familiarity with those. Thank you know they're much better than I probably. Um, but now this sounds very interesting. And so I saw in the packet you had a, you have an offer to purchase the property contingent on a special permit. And um, I know I have a few questions and I'm sure the, my, my colleagues on the board do as well. Um, you said there's a, there's a jewelry business on the first floor. Would it be your, your client's expectation that they're, um, that their business office is in this building as well, that there's someone and there would be someone on site. Yes. Yes, it would. And if I may, I just want to mention that my clients are on the line. So if you do have any additional questions about their business that you need to ask them, they can speak as well. But yes, they will be operating the business part of their business in from indoors. Okay. And um, if the expectation I didn't even realize there was a jeweler on that first floor. Are they, um, they still be there? Is that the plan? Uncertain. Um, he does have a lease, maybe leaving. That's not anything that's been determined. And I don't think it's like a store. It's more of a wholesale jewelry place. Okay. Have not been in there. Um, and is... So I guess my thought was, is the, you're gonna have 10 spaces dedicated to the, the medical vans or the people who are driving them, would yes. be a, a direct. And then another a remaining 15 spots. Um, and is that adequate for the jewelry business and any other tenant you might have in the building? Yeah, yes, because there, there wouldn't be any, that, those would be there and there wouldn't be a tenant that needed more parking than that. Right, um, I'm going to hand it over to my board members and to ask que whatever questions they might have. The only question I can think of is, um, so these vans will be parked outside in this parking lot when they're not in use. Is that what you said? Yes, they would. I'm just curious, um, what's the plan if there's a snowstorm or something? Like, how are they gonna plow it all out and get them out or Kevin, how's that gonna work? I'm just curious. I am actually not certain 
how what, what the snow plan is. I would imagine they will move them from one side to the other because the snow plowing is usually done early and they won't be taking up all of the parking spaces. So even if there is another tenant, they're not going to be there at 430 in the morning. So the vans could be moved from one side to the other as the snowing, as the snow plowing and removal is accomplished. Do clients ever come to this building or to the offices? No, they do not because these are people that have a hard time getting out to get to their medical appointments. So the benefit for them is to get picked up, not to come to one place to get taken to another place. Okay. So no one ever comes here. Then the only people that will be using this building are the people that actually work there then. Exactly. Did we have something in the file from CPC on this, Kathy? Yeah. It was a letter dated November November seventh. Here it is. Here, can you see it? Do you, Bob, do you have that? Um, oh, so with regard to the letter um, submitted by the uh, Community Planning Commission dated November 7th regarding 247 Main Street, um, the commission notes that if the building inspector deems the proposed use of a proper use under zoning, a site plan review will be required. Developments which require site plan review exemptions and noted notes the attendant um, regulations pursuant to both zoning and I very likely reference to planning. Also, the CPC would like more information on employee parking, expected traffic generation, how many employees would be in the space during the day in the office and whether the van drivers are in and out all day on call or simply out all day. I'm assuming that references out um, assisting and, and performing um, driving. Uh, and I think that that is a really interesting question and maybe Elizabeth or your, your client can tell us more about what a typical day is like for the van drivers. Do they, I mean, they, I know they come get the van in the morning, but you know, presume, I, I don't know how they're, they're booked or scheduled. Do they come back and forth? What's the, uh, what would we, what would the neighbors expect to see? I'm, I'm told that the vans, once the, they're taken to their shift, are not coming in and out and back and forth, that they're gone on various appointments. Not every van is used every day. Some days there's only five or six vans being used because they're uncertain of the exact demand. Mm -hmm. So they have extra vans that sometimes are just sitting there. And if there's a need for them, then they use them. Car Caroline, if you're if you would like to speak, that's my client. If you would like to speak with any more explanation, I believe she is on the, the line. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, thank you. Uh, this is Caroline and Michael. I think you have presented the information uh, correctly. For our business, where we have uh, about 10 vehicles at the moment. Uh, we've not had more than five drivers uh, in the recent past, uh, but the needs for our clients differ. Some may not be able to drive into big vehicles. Others may, may, may need to be driven together. Uh, so you have a big vehicle that may carry two wheelchairs uh, together. So depending on the needs on any particular day, uh, different vehicles will be taken out by the drivers. The drivers receive a schedule on a weekly basis based on the requests for services that we have received. And depending on their schedule, they will come, leave their vehicle there and take the, the company's vehicle uh, for, the, for the day. In most cases, the work for each of the driver will be uh, uh, at least five hours of the day. So some may be coming very early in the morning at six or seven in the morning. Others may have a schedule that begins at 10 o'clock. Others may have a schedule only for the afternoon. So depending on what their schedule for that day is, they would uh, arrive and pick the vehicle and uh, proceed until 
uh, their service for the day is completed, then they would bring the vehicles and pick their uh, their personal vehicles so that they can drive home. Mm -hmm. Rarely do we have more than two or three drivers arriving at the same time. So in the past five years during our operations, uh, those that are in the offices uh, rarely notice the drivers coming in and going. So there would not be an inconvenience to anyone using the, the offices or the premises. Thank you. Um, how many people would you expect to be in the office related to the business? Uh, uh, two people. We do have somebody who is uh, con uh, who is uh, arranging the schedules and uh, communicating with the drivers and the clients that are being transported. Uh, that would be the scheduler. And we do have somebody who takes care of uh, of the of the books and the billing and the payroll and those kind of questions. So at least two people would be in the office on a regular basis. That's, that's fine. And that's perfectly appropriate uh, to have them there. I was just kind of curious as to um, what the, the normal operations were. And these vans just out of, uh, do they have sirens on them like an ambulance or are these um, you know, passenger vans? What, what sort of vehicles are, are going to be used? So, Michael, would you like to answer? Thank you. Uh, the vehicles do not have any sirens. They're just like regular vans, uh, but they may have a conversion for uh, picking up wheelchairs, but there's no other change. They just look like any other vehicle. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's uh, something the neighbors would want to know. Um, and then speaking of which, do we have any abutters here? who have questions for the applicant this evening? I believe Dave is speaking, but you're on mute. I'm sorry. This is Dave O'Neill, the owner of the property. We have the cemetery on one side of the building, and on the other side, we have the stop and shop. There are no direct abutters that would be influenced. And is there, is it residential right behind you, Dave? Oh, it actually, the cemetery kind of goes out behind us. And then behind the cemetery is the Hillview. All right, well, all, gotcha. I'm looking at the, uh, the um, Google satellite map. Thanks. Um, Michelle, I see, do you have any questions for the applicant or on this? No, I think uh, explanation was clear. All right. And so, uh, just a, a last one. So the vans would be just parked overnight. So it, again, how many are there? Seven, did you say seven or eight? There are a total of 10. Total of 10, thank you. And I think we had, we had something from the building inspector in, in our file. I don't know if it made it into the printouts, but I know I saw an email from him. Let me see if I find that real quickly. I can read it if you want. Oh, Kathy, that would be lovely if you would be so kind. Thank you. Save me for lucky. From uh, Mr. Noel, the building commissioner. This is a highway business district. It is a small lot and does conform to the highway business district regulations at this time. I don't see an issue with this as long as we know the vehicles that they will have on this lot and control this count. But travel to and from this property should not be an issue as this is a fairly heavy traveled location due to the shopping plaza, 7-Eleven, and many businesses along this corridor. 
The seat of the special permit will be that they operate their business from this location, as they should not use as storage and operate from another. Thank you, Kathy. Um, um, and uh, again, I think if, if, if we were leaning towards approving this, this is something that um, I would want to see as a condition of the approval is that the applicant maintains their, their business office here. This is not just overnight storage of vehicles. Um, it's something that we've been um, diligently working on up and down Main Street to try to remove that as a as a primary use of, of the parking spaces up and down the, uh, the main street. But if it's is in connection with an active business that's going to be operating out of there, um, then that is something that I think falls within what's permitted on, in the highway business district. Uh, that being said, we have no comments from abutters. Any, any more, I think we have any more questions from the board, we can close this and move to a decision. Uh, I move to close the public hearing. I second that motion. Thank you. All in favor? Paul Breen, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. And myself, I and um, so I think the the only issues I would have raised were were addressed in um, the building inspectors um, correspondence, um, and again and and noted just now by Chairman Platt that you know the business be operated out of the and it just doesn't become a parking uh, accommodation for their local efforts. Um, and I will defer to uh, Inspector Neil's um, belief that it won't cause any different um, traffic situations that might already exist up in that area. I know it's a busy area because of shopping centers, the gas, the gas station, and all of the attendant, um, uh, you know, in out um, convenience um, locations and businesses. But again, I think uh, I think uh, Mr. Uh, to his credit, uh, um, Inspector Neal uh, did a nice job in, in addressing what would have been my concerns. Agreed, agreed. Um, and I would say, uh, Mrs. Michelle, you're here and you have had an opportunity to participate in this as well. I will um, stand aside and let you be the the voting member on this, and you, Bob and Maria, can. Uh, Close this one out. If uh, somebody there would like to make a motion, I'd like to make a motion with regard to um, uh, with the close of um, uh, the board's discussion uh, on the petition of Caroline Camus and Michael. Karugu and Mac Enterprises for a special permit to run a medical transportation business at 247 Main Street, North Reading, Mass, uh, Map 13, Parcel 12, that the petition and, uh, be permitted with an understanding that um, in addition to the uh, transportation business actually being done there, that the, um, that the petition, uh, that the, uh, the uh, owners, um, run the business if it were at the same address and location. Second. I second that motion. In favor? Uh, Bob Breen, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. Michelle no. Bodian, aye. Beautiful. All right. Well, Congratulations, that is, has been approved. There's a 20 day appeal period. And once that 20 day appeal period <laughs> runs, then you can pick up your, your special permit and um, go forward with your purchase of the property. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you much for All your right. consideration. Thank you. All right. Um, Best of luck to you on your new business. We hope that will be very successful and we will see you on Main Street. Mm -hmm. We have 
um, just to circle back around, I don't think we heard from anyone from 142 Main Street. So I would just like a motion that we close that one. Wait, not for 142 Main Street, 110 Main Street. It's getting late. Gotta make sure we get this right. 110 Main Street. Um, uh, so if, if, my, if 110 Main Street has always been about <clears throat> how they, are they, have they satisfied, <clears throat> excuse me, the inspectors, um, uh, the, the close down of their, their activities there. And without uh, Inspector Neal here or the petitioner, it's kind of a, a continuing limbo. But to that point, I haven't taken notice of it, so I can't personally comment on what's been going on over there, but. Well, I mean, the, to go back to the, the, the source of this, <laughs> this um, hearing, it was an appeal of the building commissioner's order for them to remove yes. non-conforming storage and businesses. And they were appealing the time period that Jerry said you had to get all this stuff off. And rather than upholding or not upholding Jerry's decision, we held that open so they could be working together. I think at this point, they have had ample, ample opportunity time. to work together. Um, I have all faith in our building inspector that um, his decision was in fact appropriate and I, I would be willing to uphold, vote to uphold that at this point. Um, again, we were just holding this open while there was still movement and dialogue. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it's what we can vote on. <laughs> I think we were helpful in, 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 in seeing these things get taken care of. Um, but at this point, you know, I think Jerry was in the right. He said, you know, you've got to remove these things. You have so many days to do it. We've effectively given them more. Um, but so did they suffer did they suffer any um fine or penalty fees? No, and they wouldn't as long as this okay. hearing was still open. Um, it would be up to Jerry to once the appeal, once this decision is made, um, and it's no longer essentially tolling that period that if you wanted to go find them for not having completed the removal, he could do it. Thank you. That's where I think we are. Um, but I think we've, we've carried this on our, on our agenda long enough, especially if no one's coming to talk to us about it. I'd like to move to close the, um, the hearing. I second that motion. Thank you. I am in favor of that as well. Um, and since the three of us have been on this one, we should be the votes on that. Um, do we have a motion, which would be I think, to uphold? I would like the to move to uphold the building inspector decision in accordance with the North Reading bylaws for vehicle storage, no use, use care classification as listed. And the 1997 North American industry classification system is permitted in the highway business district which is not listed and therefore considered prohibited as per section 200-32 of the zoning bylaws. The storage of heavy equipment as noted is prohibited use in the highway business district according to the town bylaws pursuant to section uh, chapter 200, section 39. And with that, in short, I move to uphold the building inspector's decision. Do I have a second? Second that motion. All right, all in favor? Bob Breen, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. Jennifer Platt, aye. Done. The, um, I think all we have are the meeting minutes to approve from last month. And I will give a um, another formal shout out to Kathy for having the most <laughs> comprehensive and detailed meeting <laughs> Um, I will say reading through there was just, it was almost like being at the meeting again. It was, it was very helpful refresher before tonight's meeting. 
Uh, that being said, I would move that we, um, I, I had noted just one or two um, nits on this. The only one I would call out is, da, 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 where did I say this? Um, in, I've got these out of order that Miss Eddy said that deliveries are not made to the site itself for the special use of landscaping business for one seven Main Street. Kathy had mentioned had said that she had made that correction. And with that being said, I would move to approve these minutes. Bob Breen second. Thank you. All in favor? Bob Breen, aye. Lockhart, aye. And myself, Jennifer Platt, aye. Meeting. And it's done. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so we are on for December 1st, just three weeks away. Uh, it's looking like a short agenda, we're hoping. Um, and that can get that out of the way before the holidays so we can focus on other wonderful things. What did we, we have do? someone else trying to go in at 340 Main Street. He's diligently trying to sell that lot. So hopefully one of these will stick. <laughs> that will be will be very interesting to see what they are proposing. Mm. We hit, is there anything in yet? Uh, I asked him to speak with CPC. So we'll see if he does file after talking with her. Okay. Awesome. Well, that sounds interesting. We will see. That's been a but we do have the chickens anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anyone wants to talk to Danielle and recommend that they make an amendment to the zoning bylaws to make chickens as of right subject <laughs> to setback requirements? Um, I think the chickens would take all of the town. <laughs> someone's got to feed the coyotes. Um, yeah, I think that is it, unless anyone has. <laughs> Anyone has news to share with us? Welcome, Michelle. Yes. Thanks. Next time I'll be on camera, I promise. <laughs> no worries. Oh, yeah, they're being very, very mysterious for us. Yes, we will uh, look forward to seeing you on the first. But uh, welcome to your first meeting. This is Thank what you. <laughs> Bob, it sounds like you're fighting a cold, my friend. Yeah, uh, just something that's just hanging on. Going around when school starts, it happens. I've already had it, so I was sick for like six weeks. Okay. Good now. Thank God. It's bad. Yeah. And as I, as I said, when I opened this up, this um, the darkness is just <laughs> it's I know. I feel like we're in Alaska. What is this? This craziness, craziness. Well, <laughs> December 20, 21st, shortest day. After that, it's all uphill. But the warm weather's throwing me off because the warm weather's so amazing. I love I know. it. I love it too, but it's Christmas in like what? What? what six weeks? It's two what? weeks of Thanksgiving from today. Yeah. That's nuts. Just nuts. Um, that's all I got. I don't need to hold you any longer. Thank you everyone for being here. Thanks for getting through this. I was very, um, I'm glad we were able to check a number of these off the agenda. That will be our goal. My goal going forward is not to have so many of these just rolling. No, just get them done. Yeah. Be decisive, get them done. I, um, Bob, do you want to make you want to move to close this? It's your your. I'll make a motion to close tonight's meeting. I second that motion. I am so in favor. <laughs> Bob Brain, I. Maria Lockhart, I. Jennifer Platt, I. All right. Uh, thank you all. Have a lovely Thanksgiving. Enjoy the time with you your too. families. Um, we'll see you in three weeks. Thank yes. you again. Good night, Michelle. Good night. Bye, everyone. Bye, enjoy, everyone. Your, enjoy, your, enjoy your away time, Kathy. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We're doing this, yeah. doing it early because you're away. Yeah. We're going to be away. But it's after, it's after December 1. Right. right? But after the December, yeah.
I'll be happy to sell them. Okay. All right. See you Night. Night. Night.